calls across the nation to defund the police. To end policing as we know it. Off the charts violence in New York City. 11 people shot in just eight hours on Sunday. This is Sunday. about the police officers, officers who every single day put on that uniform and they run towards danger when we run away from it. Oh, guns up. Giddy up, y'all. Guns up, giddy up. Welcome to Failure to Stop Podcast, the number one show where police meet society and culture. Uh, we are back in society and culture. They moved us to true crime for just a little bit. We're back over to society and culture. Tonight is True Crime Tuesday. This is the night shift edition of the Failure to Stop Ooh. Podcast. We do four different styles of show here every week. We do True Crime Tuesdays with Andrea up late. We bring you last call every Thursday, giving you everything else you need to know in life. Uh, so you do have something else to talk about over the weekend, other than dead babies and domestic violence makes you sound cool to your civilian friends. Com Center every Thursday night with Drew Breezy and Jonathan Bates. And then uh, Friday's case breakdowns with myself and Drew Breezy. But tonight it's all about mayhem and murder and true crime tonight's show is brought to you by ghostbed.com forward slash wolf pack sleep so good it's scary, Ooh, it's scary. So you want to support this show right now we need your ratings and reviews more than ever because we have been demonetized on youtube because we are infiltrated on our live coverage of of the recent uh mrs uh the the memphis beatdown and even though we were saying what was on par with the rest of the country, that these were thugs, that these were gang member cops, uh, maybe like Antifa or something. I don't know. But we had about 400 non Wolfpack members in the chats, all yeah. calling us cop lovers and cop haters. And anyway, they complained enough that right now the episode is under review by YouTube and therefore all monetization has been paused. So in the meantime, to support the show, um, Go leave us a rating or review on iTunes or Spotify to keep the show rolling. Let the sponsors know that you still love us by giving us a rating and review. Right now we're doing a contest um, throughout the team. If we can get 100 reviews, 100 new reviews in the next 10 days, actually it's nine days now, uh, then I'm buying prizes for the team. So everybody's going to get a new hoodie on the team if we get to 100. Um, if they get to 50, I'm going to buy them all around beers um, when they get here in April. April, 20, uh, April 12th, Wednesday, April 12th, our failure to stop meetup. People are coming from all around the countryside to meet in Clayton, North Carolina. The hotel, uh, just DM us, but and we'll give you the information. But the hotel is walking distance from the studio and from the distillery. We'll be shuttling people back and forth from the airport, uh, airport to keep it as cheap as possible for everybody. Uh, but it will be a meetup at Instill Distilling Company from five to nine where you must pay for your drinks while you're there. But then uh, nine o'clock, the after party is at the studio um, where there'll be drinks and hors d'oeuvres from nine to 11 o'clock at night. You'll get to hang out with the crew. We'll do like a little live thing on the stage for you guys. It's going to be a lot of fun. Other than that, uh, we have true crime updates and I'll pass that off to Andrea up late who has turned 50 years old today. Happy birthday, Andrea. Thank you. Thank you for all the stories, all the pictures today. Um, it was well received and I appreciate it. We'll talk all about that stuff um, at the at the end of the show. But yeah, so for updates, there's not a lot going on. Last week, I think you called it what? Snooze, snooze news? Um, snooze news. Because there wasn't a whole lot. There's really still not. The one thing that we'll talk, uh, Murdoch trial is ongoing as we speak. So uh, they wrapped up, I think, day five today i don't know it's kind of running together uh, i think the prosecution you guys i don't know i've not been following it i did just check for updates prosecution i think starts tomorrow the one thing though we're getting more cell phone uh data that's been extracted that's being released now um and talked about during the during the trial so it has to do with um there are capabilities that show if a phone has gone from you know, like landscape mode, to portrait mode, meaning horizontal okay. to vertical. There's technology that can capture um, when steps were taken, you know, while the phone is being held. And so they're using all this and it's, you can Google it. You can look it up. It talks about it and all the transcripts and the different things from the court cases from the or excuse me, from the trial that's ongoing now. How um, because he was very specific, Alec was very specific. If you remember, he was charged in the murder of his wife and his son most recently connected to a million other deaths, a lot of other sus suspicious stuff, uh, but currently on trial for the murder of his wife and son. 
he was very specific when he spoke about finding their bodies by the kennel at their hunting property and that he had been with his dying father uh, just prior to this. We learned later that their marriage was in shambles. They were not even living in the same home. They had been in an ar- a lot of other things. It was all very suspicious. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, in saying that, this cell phone data, being able to extract this kind of specific information is very important. And it's not lining up with a lot of the things uh, that Alec has said uh, during this entire time. So that's interesting. We also have, I just took a picture of it. I had some notes that I did not bring home with me today. So uh, there's a moment when Alec was shown a picture of the, uh, the crime scene including his son. So his son was shot and killed with a shotgun and his wife with a rifle. So two different guns, which made this at first a little strange, but anyway, we get into that on that show. If you listen to it, there's a moment when he was shown the picture of his son at the crime scene. And he says, um, it was so bad. I did him so bad and cried out and sobbed. So prosecution has taken this and played it again saying, do you hear what he's saying? I did him so bad. He was even, he was a good boy. So the defense has gone back, slowed down the audio, trying to determine or to say that what he's really saying is it's so bad. They did him so bad. I mean, you know, whomever did this (laughs) did him so bad, but prosecution is still arguing. So they're trying to get in experts on this and that to listen to this, um, audible data to see what exactly he said but if he said what they think then that's uh pretty incriminating Uh, you know i here's the thing how about we not commit crimes with cell phones are we not do people not listen to true crime no 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 it was um i know but like the fact that they they can manipulate they can get the phone data from being in his pocket and turning certain ways no that's what i'm saying it was his wife's phone that's what so what he's saying where he found it and the last time they had texted and all this stuff he thought he'd covered his tracks with the text that he sent her and these kinds of things but it didn't make sense because she never moved forward with that phone gotcha yeah 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 Uh, okay and i'm sure they're doing it with his phone as well but her phone is the one that uh so before you commit a true about. crime, make sure the person doesn't have their phone on them. Yeah, get rid of the I'm phone gonna, first. I'm about to do some real true crime here. I need you to turn your phone off and throw it in that pond. Can you go on real and quick? <laughs> go on and step on it a time or two. Okay. <laughs> Crush it. Why don't you make like Hillary Clinton and burn that motherfucker? Just acid wash it. it. And then get a concussion and forget that you burned it. Um, <laughs> and so it says that uh it, another thing that was interesting is that that we didn't hear initially, you know, and you know, we talk about this all the time when you, when you're first talking about a case or when something's new and someone's initially being charged, you you don't have the detail. We, we likely won't ever have all of the details and that's fine, but things are coming out now that we're, that's new to us. Um, and one of the things is that the prosecution has additionally claimed Alec changed clothes after he killed his wife and son and then drove to his mother's house to establish the alibi because he had on a clean white. Remember, this is like, frat boy, lawyer, financial family, white button down. They were always in like the mattress plaid and the, the, you know, the button downs and the chinos and the whatnot. But he had on a white button down shirt. He has just arrived to the crime scene of his, his wife and his son, who son, like I said, head just about blown off wife shot in the back. Uh, but his shirt was clean when authorities got there. Uh, I can't imagine a scenario in which that would be the case, right? Because you're gonna you're gonna get down, you're gonna cradle, you're gonna try CPR, yeah. you're gonna look at them yeah. anything. I mean, you're gonna have blood right. all over you. So tears yeah. and mascara and all the things. That dude right? definitely wear makeup. Who, Alec? Yeah. Ugh. I just that whole it just whoa grosses me out again y'all go back and we did a three-parter on that it's so because it is still so interesting it's so wild um oh so moving forward idaho moscow idaho the college students uh not a whole lot going on new there we do know that authorities had if you remember when 
Brian Kohlberger left the residence, that Hyundai Elantra that had been the car in question for a while. And when he left his residence to drive with his father to Pennsylvania, so across country to Pennsylvania for um, Christmas, the FBI, different local authorities had people kind of set up and stationed to just kind of keep an eye on him as he's making this route, right? Because they, they can't... Right get him just yet but they absolutely know that he's who they are targeting so they're they're kind of keeping on him they've recently just said it doesn't matter i mean it's moot now they have him but that i guess he like unwittingly like he didn't even know he was necessarily being watched on his transit but he like escaped watch so for a few hours they thought they had just lost him i'm not sure if he went just an entirely different way or what miscommunication might have happened but i don't know it was almost a little comical only because it turned out okay but they've just kind of released a little more of what they've seized from uh, the house uh, where the murder took place. And uh, we know they took some computer towers from his house. They took a vacuum canister. And then at the murder scene, they did take some um, clippings of a mattress cover that were kind of stained reddish brown. Nothing that's, I mean, nothing you wouldn't expect that they would be taken. So that's kind of it. There's not a whole lot going on in terms of developments. A lot of the stuff we've talked about now, it's like we're just waiting on trials and waiting on uh, things to get moving. So, you know, my wife's had some messy periods in our bed. So there's a few stains on the mattresses. I think that, I think I'm going to be fucked. If she ever comes up dead, they're going to be like, there was blood stains all over his mattress. No. And you can, you can, uh, Tell the difference. I, I would assume that you can, there's going to be, but I don't know. Once it's a stain on a mattress, like I guess it depends on how much time, there's going to be differences in that blood than just blood that circulates in your arteries or your veins. All right, There's good. other, you know. Damn, there goes but, that alibi. Oh, so you turned it around. I got you. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's not blood. That's period blood. Yeah, right, dude. If I, I ever killed that. my wife, I would be so fucked. <sighs> She's basically so get my away slave. With it? No, it's just like oh, I would have you mean to do everything. Life. Yeah, I would have to do everything myself. That would suck. I'd rather be murdered. No, that wouldn't work out. Than to be without my wife. Like, take me. Don't leave me here with these five kids. <laughs> Tim McGraw sang that song. Did he? Yeah. Take me with you. It's 90s country. Yeah, Come on, man. Well, what do we have tonight? What's tonight's awesome breakdown? Last last mm. week was incredible. Last week was one of my favorite episodes. What was oh the the vampire of Sacramento? Yeah, absolutely one of my top ten favorite true crimes. Yeah, if y'all didn't done. listen, listen to that and like that it good and review one. it and become our friends and our MySpace it partners. Was gross. Whatever it else was we gross. need. Yeah, well, it was gross. Before we get started, before we jump into tonight's uh, oh, tonight's mayhem and murder, we got a special shout out to Ghostbed. Ghostbed has been a loyal sponsor since day one, and we love them. Hopefully, they come on with us in twenty twenty three. Our contract ends, um, and uh, you know, hopefully, they're going to come back on with us. I haven't even sent yeah. them a letter, um, so I need to probably send that. I guess tonight. Um, but every match has a 20 year warranty and you can try them out for 101 nights, not 99. Not, by the way, if you're going to buy a ghost bed, do it tonight and use that promo code Wolfpack. So I can get a couple of extra sales under our belt. So when I go in there to juice them up in the morning, there's a couple of sales on the books. Um, every match has a 20 year warranty and you can try them out for 101 nights, baby. If you don't like them, you can send them back. No hard feelings, but you won't. One of our favorite parts about ghost beds at each mattress has that cooling technology in it. So that if you get hot at night, stay cool in one of these bad boys i always say stay hard while staying cool in a ghost bed they also offer bundles that you can get everything that you need you don't even have to really think about it choose from their four mattresses and pick your bundle so whether you just need a mattress and a frame or you want it all like their cooling sheets and pillows you can get the best bang for your buck it's your birthday i'm not gonna do that to you tonight i'm not gonna make you sing on your birthday but <laughs> our favorite part about ghost bed and i will make you do this that they're made in the good old USA. 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 Speaking of that, um, Andrea was about 25 when Rocky Four came out. 
<laughs> right now, Ghostbed is offering a flash sale, forty percent off. Ghostbed bonus next day is thirty five percent off, going into Valentine's Day. Mattress and adjustable base. Use that promo code Wolfpack. Get that gift that keeps on giving, baby. Give them the gift. You know, you want to save the save the money on the the bears and the pillow. You know, all that shit. Get you a Ghostbed pillow. One of our fans just sent Andrea a Ghostbed pillow. So, um, and I think he wants it back. That's what happens, and I'm convinced you're sleeping on it. Huh? Uh, he wants he wants it back after a year so he can smell it. Uh, You're so gross. Those, I'm just kidding. Uh, that was a pretty cool gift. Uh, he got me two bottles of wine and you a ghost bed pillow. So that's really 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 cool. Um, and he's it a truck. started with you telling so me he got me a ghost bed pillow. pillow and a bottle of wine. He did. So I think that you have again, again, <laughs> taken my bottle. Y'all start send. I'm gonna get a PO box for Wilmington. Y'all start sending me the stuff. Bottle of wine, it's still in there, but he did. He got me two bottles. He got one for Ashley, one for me, and one for you. Ashley's pregnant, okay. she can't drink it. So, no, I keep all of your shit in a little bag. Didn't we just deliver you a big bag? Yes, of you shit did. from Christmas. I don't think it was all in there. That was uh, that was liner. from um, that was from uh, Lumber Chef, Lumber Chef, yeah, yeah. And then and... you got some other one here too that some nurse sent you, like some kind of like ID. Oh, yeah, you told me about holders. that thought they That's were nice. bombs but um anyway go support those who support us uh there's not a lot of advertisers out there that are begging to be on a police related show or first responder related show and ghost bed's one of those so um if you're pro law enforcement if you're pro first responder uh then you better be sleeping on a ghost bed if not well then you're basically a russian so <laughs> a spreckensy dick all right tonight true crime mayhem and murder michelle martinko Who's Michelle Martinko? So, Marcia, Marshall. 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 <laughs> Is that the... Poor girl. I can't. Is, Mar... Is Mar... Michelle white? Mar... Yeah. Michelle's white. Marshall's not. Like, yeah. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> so, Michelle actually... Um, so, Michelle was 18 years old when she was murdered, and this was in 1979. This case is... So, so interesting because they, they kind of call this the case where um, in death, she solved her own crime, basically. And it's because of uh, some of her actions then and some technology now. And it's super interesting. Uh, and I just, oh, I don't know. It makes me really excited for the future of, of crime solving, if you will, if not to sound like a comic book. But because while I loathe technology in a lot of aspects, this stuff with these cases, these cold cases, is just incredible. And to know that some people can finally, you know, live out the rest of their lives with at least a little bit of knowledge or a little bit of time left uh, with these things being solved is, is fantastic. So let's take, let's take it back. We're going to be in Grand in Cedar Rapids, excuse me, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Uh, this is 1979. So well, when the murder took place, but in 1961, uh, Michelle was born to parents Albert and Janet. She has an older sister named Michelle. Uh, just a really nice family in kind of a small town. Uh, Albert and Janet tried for a while to have their second child. We're having a tough time. I think went through um, some treatments and different things like that to try to get pregnant. And finally finally did. So I think, I, I don't know, it, it doesn't matter, but I feel like mom was like maybe like 44 when um, uh, Michelle was born. So, you know, not, you know, but a little bit, a little bit on the um, later side of things there. Uh, but so they were very excited to welcome her into the world. As she got a little bit older, she had scoliosis. So she kind of had to wear a brace for a while that made her feel uncomfortable and um, kind of like an outcast in school. And then uh, around 12 or 13, she was able to get that brace off and the child just blossomed, right? It was like the, the beautiful swan story. She had, uh, uh, at the time, Farrah Fawcett was all the rage and Michelle had this long hair and she learned to style it. So her sister will talk about her wanting to style it like Farrah Fawcett and it worked and she was gorgeous and she was like triple threat. She was super smart. She was in all these clubs and activity, choir, theater, you name it. Um, do you have any of those uh, pictures of her? Just a couple of her, like, as a teenager? Nope. Uh, no, I don't have any of those. So sorry. I will 
get them right now. You must have sent two emails. Maybe. Oh, plus nine. Damn. Damn, it's a lot of photos that I did not download. I only saw the first three. Uh, keep it's going, fine. though. I, I, I yeah. got it. So, um, but anyway, that kind of sets the picture that she didn't have a ton of friends growing up because of her scoliosis and her brace. And then, poor thing, it kind of like swung to the other side of the pendulum once all that got fixed because then she was, um, again, like that, that triple threat, and that caused a lot of jealousy amongst her peers. She uh, didn't have a tough time with teachers, with her academics, again, with extracurricular activities. Uh, she would have boyfriends, but just most accounts will say there just weren't a lot of girls uh, hanging around, unfortunately, uh, to be her buddy. So, and we're going to kind of remember that as we talk a little bit later, right? So uh, she had a boyfriend uh, around junior year or so of high school named Andy, and uh, we speak of Andy because she, they'd seen each other for a little while and they went to prom together and a few dances and whatnot. And, uh, she finally broke it off with, with Andy and he became quite the jealous one. So he just kind of wouldn't leave her alone. He would try to call her, try to find her wherever she was. Again, we don't have cell phones, right? So he tried to find, um, you know, whose house she could be at or whatever. Then even like initiated calling her family, right? These kinds of things. Um, to the point where it was a bit, I'm not sure that she felt unsafe. It was most certainly annoying and he would get angry though. So he would ask like who she's dating. Uh, is she dating anyone? Who is it? What does he look like? Why not him? All these kinds of things. So he eventually kind of, I don't know that he ever really gets out of the picture uh, before her murder, but he was always kind of in the periphery there swimming around making her phone calls and making her a little bit uncomfortable. So on December 19th, 1979, there was a banquet for the school's uh, choir and she was a part of the choir. All right. So it was at the Sheridan Inn down the street. Yeah. There's a picture with her fair faucet hair of Michelle. Dude, she's a um, smoke show. Yeah. She's really pretty, really, really pretty. Um, so she goes to this banquet uh, for a school's choir she, like I said, the Sheridan Inn. Anyway, so she wore, uh, they always talk about her her outfits too. She was a bit of a little fashionista. So she had like a black dress, black tights, black shoes or heels, a little scarf, um, a little uh, like white and brown rabbit fur coat and a brown leather purse. So she was all done up and I think uh, feeling nice. So she goes to this banquet and then has some errands to run after. So she asks a friend, a girl, uh, to go with her. And she said they weren't going to go to the Westdale mall. It was a new, a new mall in town and Michelle actually worked there. And so she wanted to go and probably likely to kind of show off her little outfit a little bit, you know, and go out with her girlfriend. Uh, the friend declined and Michelle decided to go on, you know, and go it alone. So she gets there that evening. She had probably, um, I think it said like $180, $290 with her because she was going to go pick up a coat that her mother had put on layaway for her, which I feel like that's pretty on pricey uh, by any standards, much less than 1979 for an 18-year-old girl, right? Uh, so, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> Drew. Um, anyway, so... Uh, she goes to get this coat and while she's there, she's mingling around again. She knows a lot of the kids that work there because she also works in this mall. So I think if you watch, you know, stranger things, right. You're, you're it's pushing 1980. It's the new mall in town. Um, it's probably shutting down some mom and pop businesses around that everybody's not so happy about, but the kids are loving it. So um, she decides to not, yeah, there's another picture of her. Uh, she decides to not get the coat that her mother had on layaway. All right. She decided to keep the cash and not do it. So she gets ready to leave. Uh, mall closes at 10. All right. So she, uh, she walks through the mall again, talks to some more friends, sees a friend of hers, a uh, male as she's leaving the mall. So she was last seen between 8 and 9 p.m. There's some differentiating stories there. So between 8 and 9, she's last seen walking out of the mall back to the car. She had borrowed her parents' Buick uh, to take that night to the mall. So that's on December 19th. Again, the mall closed at 10 o'clock. 
All right. Never to be seen alive again. So she doesn't come home. Uh, family starts to get worried. We know that at two o'clock in the morning, dad calls the police to officially uh, render her missing. Uh, some people wonder why it took so long. I just, there's a few things, right? This was a different time. You, you weren't, uh, you weren't used to immediately hearing back from someone. It's not like you had a text at the other end that you could, you know, Hey, where are you? I'm going to bed. Are you good? You know, you're kind of used to kind of sitting up and waiting again. It had been a function for her school. Maybe they thought she's going to be out late. Hell, maybe dad fell asleep in the recliner and woke up at 1.30 and realized she's not there. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't, there's nothing to me that's. Uh, yeah, I mean, when I, when I was a kid, uh, I would go off, like, I'd, I'd like not come She was 18. School, she was a senior Go to somebody else's school. house, spend the night. And then like around like noon or the next day, I'd call my parents and be like, oh, by the way, I'm at so-and-so's house. Right, like, oh, right. So I don't, know. I don't find anything uh, wrong with that at all. So <clears throat> the father reported her missing, like I said, officially around 2 a.m., so as soon as he calls police and lets them know that he goes out on his own to uh, start to look and then, and police do as well. They locate the Buick at the mall on the Northwest side, part near JC Penney uh, at around four o'clock in the morning. So just at two hours after dad calls it in and they approach the vehicle and find Michelle slumped over the passenger seat and she'd been stabbed to death. Oh. All right. So, Oh, uh, yeah, there she is. <laughs> Gosh, she's just, just a kiddo. Um, so let's talk a little bit about that crime scene. All right. So first of all, there was lack of blood outside of the car. Uh, there's a shoe. Uh, we're showing some pictures now of the crime scene, guys. If you're not, uh, eventually, if you listen and are not watching, there's uh, you can see on the outside door handle, there's a little bit of a smear of blood there. And for the most part, everything else is contained inside the car in terms of uh, visible blood. So that's going to lead you to believe that this occurred inside the car, right? It's not like it happened outside and someone threw her in there. Uh, she had multiple defensive wounds to her hands and uh, wrists and, and forearms. So she fought like hell, it sounds like. Uh, she had gashes and slashes all over her hands and wrists. And that's very, very important moving forward. Um, the ME, the medical examiner, stated that she died between 8 and 10, which makes perfect sense uh, from the timeline that we have. Uh, they never, though, determined that it was actually, we say stabbed, but it wasn't necessarily a knife. They just say a, a sharp object. They couldn't even really determine the width or the size of the object because a lot of them, they weren't, these wounds were not... Um, uh, all the same. So they're all kind of different jabs and cuts and kind of all over the place. So <clears throat> that's that part of it. Uh, we know that there were no fingerprints, which leads them to believe that the killer did not or did wear gloves, which you've got to think again, not that no one wore gloves committing a murder at, you know, at that time pushing 1980, but not as many people did because DNA technology wasn't what, it, you know, not everybody's just worried about every, like I'll say DNA, but even fingerprints, people just gloves weren't used quite as often in that moment. Um, this man or woman did. Uh, and the motive couldn't have been robbery because she had, or likely wasn't because she had uh, the cash still on her. Remember she had 180 bucks to get that coat. It was still in her purse the things that she had bought at the mall were still in a bag in the back of the car. Nothing that anyone knew of had been taken whatsoever. Uh, she was fully clothed. Uh, it was determined that she was not sexually assaulted. So that wasn't a means here. Um, and then the Emmy and authorities continue to say that it's easy to think that this is a man, like that would be your first thought, but we don't know for sure that it was. So they were saying that kind of right off the rip. So, Moving forward with the investigation, they go on and set up a tip line. Immediately calls start pouring in that aren't leading to any fruition. They have, uh, I mean, dozens and dozens and dozens of interviews. Her older sister had recently gotten married uh, and she was very close with her sister and her brother-in-law. But I mean, they 
you know, they interviewed him. They polygraphed him, her family, her friends, her boyfriend. Remember Andy, the boyfriend that had been jealous. So we're going to talk about him a little bit as well. Um, they cleared a lot at that time. The, the biggest thing they kind of had was the polygraph, right? So they cleared a lot of, uh, of not even suspects, but people that they interviewed with, with the polygraph. So that's one thing that they used a lot. Um, so this is interesting. There was a guy, one of the guys that they were able to clear was a fellow mall worker, a fellow mall employee. They found him kind of roaming the parking lot around the time that they found her car. And he had, uh, I believe he was like 19 at the time. I could be wrong. He had a knife on him. And so they see a guy with a knife. So of course they want to have a little chat with him. And he admits to following women around the mall when he works and that he does carry this knife with him and that he enjoys like ogling the mannequins. Like he likes the way the ogling? mannequins. <laughs> hmm? what, is, what is ogling? Like looking at, but you're looking at like longingly, oh. like lustfully, like enjoying the mannequins. Hey, you never looked at a mannequin and been like, I wonder what's under that dress. Yeah, no. Mm-mm. Me either. I'm trying to. Mm-mm. I've never done that. <sighs> but I mean, what in the world, right? But they were able to, eventually they cleared him and he passed the poly. Basically, it was like, yeah, he's a weirdo, but that doesn't equate to murder. But also, as a woman, I'm like, oh, God, I'm walking around. You know what I mean? Like, that doesn't mean he's going to murder someone, but oh, my goodness. Um not me plugging in my computer right now. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, how like, did they find that out? Like, did you just come out with it? Like, is he like, uh, I like to follow women and I'm sexually attracted to the mannequins in the mall, but I did not kill this woman. Right. Well, and I'm they're sure. They're like, yo, like slow down. Like, we just need dead. to know you didn't kill her. <laughs> like, <laughs> they're like, Eric, did you kill Andrea? Exactly. No. And I do a very kid. But sometimes at night I get on Reddit to see if there's anybody in my town that's posted anything on the uh, Gone Wild page. They're like, what? I'm like, no, never mind. I uh, made all that up. And like, we just wanted to know if you killed Andrea. But also, no, I didn't. But also, yeah, no, I definitely didn't do that. But I sometimes go to Target just to grope the fat over plus the, the overweight mannequins mannequins i just wanted to touch a fat one so yeah so you know again as i said it in a very condensed version likely what happened or i would assume is that they had been a chat with him he had a knife he was there wandering around the night that her body's found so pretty likely i would assume they bring him on in have a big chit chat maybe talk to a few people that he knows who are like yeah man he's a weirdo and then he admits to these things you know i don't know if that's all speculation but i would assume something something along those lines and he passed the polygraph and they put a lot of weight in that and he got gone he was fine so then they had another prime suspect for quite a while so a man in a neighboring town had broken in um, and raped a woman a month prior uh, he raped her and he threatened to kill, I think her children were sleeping in the next room and he like threatened to kill them and left. But, um, eventually a little bit of DNA testing came out and he was cleared of that con- completely. And he did go, he was, uh, charged with and incarcerated, uh, for the crime of, of that rape. But, you know, we talk about this all the time and none of that on a side note, but that doesn't have to do with this case, but none of that makes sense because that guy broke into a home. He raped a woman. He didn't stab her. He did. You know what I mean? Like he threatened murder, like of her children. None of that fits the same guy. Doesn't that wouldn't make a lot of sense anyway, but whatever. So then you got to think now the case is starting to get a little time has gone by They're They're not having the leads that they thought that they would have. Now we've got, things like psych psychics are coming in the mix and they're interviewing them and letting them talk to witnesses. We've got uh, hypnosis coming in. So some people was an original sketch. Uh, An original sketch was made of a a brown eyed, brown curly haired guy. uh, And it was solely drawn off the, uh, the description from like a quote witness under hypnosis. Uh, So no, no, 
yeah, we'll get there. But um, that was not the original. So the original sketch was actually, like I said, like a brunette with curly hair, totally different than what we just saw, which we are going to talk about. Um, so anyway, so there's that, right? So that again was 1979. Moving forward in 1995, Michelle's father died. And in 1998, her mother died with no, no news, no information, no answers. Oh. They did, the sister will tell you that they did, um, they did both die thinking and convinced that Andy, the boyfriend had done it, which a lot of people thought that. Andy actually had to move. He moved away. Um, like I said, he was cleared on the polygraph, but that's kind of all they had in the moment. And uh, in terms of like a, a witch hunt and, you know, amongst family and friends and like the locals, Andy was definitely looked at as a prime suspect, but, you know, not necessarily to authorities. So mom and dad are dead. Let's move on forward. So Harvey was the original detective on the case and he worked this case for years and years and he was very very invested we talk about this a lot there's often one or two that like this has become whatever that case is has become their baby we've talked about it i think uh two stories ago where even that gentleman said basically like i won't even retire till i figure this out you know a case that had gone cold that was super sad so um harvey was that detective in this case as the time went on uh, he did get older. He did retire. His son, Matt Dellinger, uh, became a detective. Now, I think Matt was around five years old when this took place, but he remembers coming up in the home and hearing about it at home, right? And, and hearing things about it. And so he, he always felt a little uh, connected or invested in this case as well. Just, I mean, just from being around it, right? Around his dad, probably coming home and decompressing and, and whatever and talking about it. So Matt gets on and he, uh, he takes over the case. So uh, he starts to look into some things, starts to get interested. It has gone cold. You got to think guys, what I say, 79. So now we're up to, we're going to be talking about 2006. So like 27 years have gone by. That's how, that's how cold we are. This thing is done, done, done. So he gets, he gets a little bit interested in it, Matt does. So there's a tip. After 27 years, someone calls in a tip on that case. The tip winds up leading to nothing. It, it, it didn't matter. It didn't help. It didn't do anything. However, it got Matt's wheels turning. Uh, so he goes back and he starts diving through the case files again, looking through the evidence again. And they knew that there was blood on the front of Michelle's dress that did not belong to Michelle. The only other blood that was not hers was this one little bit on her dress. Um, so all they could determine as, as DNA technology went on at the time was that it was male blood. All right. So there's a, we're showing a picture of the dress. It looks a little, little, you know, pulled, a little ripped, Definitely uh, not like someone tried to rip it off of her, but much more like she was fighting while wearing the dress. Uh, so again, DNA has shown us, at, you know, the more archaic forms that it was male DNA and that's male blood. And that's all, that's all we knew. All right. So he starts thinking, you know, we've had so many more advancements, so much, uh, so many more technological advancements with, with DNA and with our testing now, like he really, his curiosity has peaked and he wants to start running this. So this is where it gets crazy interesting to me anyway. Um, so they take that blood. They're able to build a partial DNA profile at this point to find another person to match that DNA. The chances of that are less than one in 100 billion. All right. So the accuracy, the accuracy of this is insane. All right. So they're building a profile. So think when we talk about, victimology and working backward to build the profile of the killer. They're doing it here, but with science, purely with DNA. N the, the best thing they even have to a physical description is a sketch drawn off of someone who was under hypnosis and a psychic. Like That's as good as they got. They got nothing else. So they're working with this DNA alone and using it to literally uh, build, build a person, uh, which it does in our bodies. So, 
They enter it in CODIS. Um, that's the combined DNA index search, if you're not aware, but CODIS is talked about all the time and all this stuff. And it's just a big old database of um, genetics, basically, of all the DNA. So about 125 people are swabbed and cleared. So now you've got to think these people have gone on to live their lives. It's pushing 30 years later. They're adults. They're aging adults. They're married, kids, divorced, deaths in the families, jobs, whatever. And now detectives are knocking on doors saying, hey, we're, we're going to go on and need like that polygraph was cute. But now we've got some more information. We're going to need to swab you. Damn. So. So they did. And they swabbed and cleared around, like I said, 125 people. So in 2017, now we're this much farther into it. Now we're pushing 40 years 30, since yeah. the time, mm -hmm, since the time of the crime, right? A company called uh, Parabon Nano Labs, Parabon Nano Labs. They specialize in a certain kind of DNA phenotyping uh, that's... Uh, it's pretty incredible. But so this company was hired to create um, an image based on DNA. So instead of taking someone's verbal word that, you know, he had a nose kind of this shape, his eyebrows were far mm. apart, his lips were whatever. They use the DNA to build a physical appearance of a person. They can tell uh, the race, the gender and physical characteristics based on this phenotyping of the dna it's wild God, so, so creepy. if you would please pull up the picture you just had a minute ago that was like a sketch yes so what we're gonna talk about yeah we're gonna talk about the guy uh in the real photo in black and white you guys we have a split screen up of us this will be on our instagram to, by the way yes yeah yeah look at a uh, failure to stop and andrea up late to to see this stuff but the the picture on the left is uh an animated a uh, you know a computerized drawing of a sketch of a man, very detailed in terms of it's, it's not, I say sketch, it's not even a sketch. You, you have eye color, hair yeah. color, a certain chin shape. And then we have it a, it looks like one of those AI, with, like those AI. Yeah. Things it looks like the AI pictures. Really exactly. Um, and it probably actually was something along those lines. The, the picture on the right is an actual photograph of the man uh, that we're going to talk about later, who is actually the murderer. And so Whoa, they used the DNA to get that picture. Wow. Right, dude, isn't, that's insanity. Isn't that crazy? Well, so Shandor 1920 just says, I wish I hadn't 23 and Mead. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about these ancestry genetic websites for this reason. Why did exactly, you murder okay? somebody? <laughs> oh, Shandor, yeah, potentially. So, but listen, so that was in 2008. And oh, excuse me, I mean, I'm getting excited. In 2017 is when that sketch was, uh, rendered right so they release the sketch then that's it time goes by uh they're asking for people to call in of course they do you know when it's it's kind of you, you speak out of both sides of your tongue you ask people to call in and you really want them to but then you also have to investigate everything that you hear <laughs> and so i mean i think around close to 200 people called in tips based on this guy they're like oh i knew that guy like that's saying you know did you know anyone who lived in that area at that time who would have been around that age with those physical characteristics and like 200 mm. people called in people, uh, but none of them, they, none of them passed the DNA. They all got cleared. So about a year later in 2018, they entered the data into something called GED match. GED match is, or I mean, excuse me, not GED, geo match. Geo match is like a, um, like a, GDmatch.com is where Lazaro Lopez got his high school diploma. Is where, so it's like an ancestry, like a 23andMe, just like Shandor right. mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. It's one of those uh, ancestry websites. So in 2018, they put this data that they already have in that. Now they're cross -mass matching it with that, meaning the goal for this is to find any genetic similarities. So any potential relatives to the suspect. It doesn't have to be the suspect. Yeah, it doesn't have to be the actual suspect that they're trying to find on here, but anyone who's plugged in there. So if you've plugged in your data and your great uncle had committed a crime, they can then take yours. They can retrieve it legally and lawfully and then t trace that back and narrow it down to find out that it was him. All right. Right. So meaning you, your hands are clean. You're fine. You're not in trouble, but they've used your information to do this. Right. 
So <clears throat> they do enter it. Check this out, y'all. So they found one match that shared DNA markers with the suspect, uh, the suspect that they already, you know, had used the DNA phenotyping with. They determined this to be the, <laughs> this is how specific it is. Not, they found that it was a match. And by knowing it was a match, by looking at the DNA and looking at the strands and the RNA and, and all the things, they determined that the kill, this has to be the killer's second cousin once removed. Jeez. Okay. Um, so the company spent months and months uh, figuring this out and building a family tree. There's some diagrams we'll put up, but there's diagrams where you see this company. This is an outside company. Like This isn't even authorities doing this. This is, they've hired out this out, like <laughs> who specialize in genealogy and in these kinds of things to get this figured out. So they've been months. They're able to build this family tree that consists of four sets of great, great grandparents of the suspect. So this is what they're working with now. They have a, a picture and then they have potentially four sets of great, great grandparents. So they have to start narrowing this down. All right. Oh. But already their pool to narrow is so incredibly small. It's so much smaller than any, they had nothing before they had the whole wide world right. before. Right. Right. So they're getting somewhere. I mean, it's got to be so exciting at what the time. What was the green car part of this? The green car is the family's Buick, the mom and dad's Buick that uh, Michelle drove to the mall that she was found dead in. Okay. okay. Yeah. I think it was a 1972. I've got it written somewhere. Uh, Buick. So the four sets of great, great grandparents, they whittled this down to eliminate closer and closer to the actual, to a family member to find the suspect. Right. So they find a match that was a first cousin of the killer. Now at this point, we'll go on to talk about this, but the, the person they found, even though they're first cousins, they didn't spend time together. They lived somewhere different, not in the same state. She didn't have any right. family ties to him. Like, you know, she didn't know him, whatever, but they find uh, the, so they narrow this down then they find a set of brothers. So they narrow it down when they find the first, a first cousin. And when they, by process of elimination, realize it's probably going to be one of these three brothers uh, with the last name Burns. One of these three is very likely our suspect. So what do you think they do? What is the one thing they have? What's the only thing they have right now? Picture. A picture. Well, more specifically, science. DNA. They have DNA. So what do you think they do? They can't get a warrant. They can't get a warrant and go get this, these guys' DNA right now. Like they can't use this. They probably information watch from the them, tree. like wait for them to throw out something. Like, yeah, throw out some exactly. Trash, maybe do some and trash pools. See if they exactly their nose into something. And this becomes a point to talk about because um, I'm not sure what states this doesn't work in, but in Iowa, as in many, trash is not considered your legal property at that point in terms of privacy laws and once things like that. Once you bring it down, once you take it off of your curtilage, meaning that it leaves your driveway and it is put out, it's reasonable to think that you're giving that trash up to the public. It is no longer your private property, so you do not need a search warrant. Now, if your trash can it. is up next to your house... And not down well, by the street. But listen, I don't think this is curtilage. federal, right? Like, so that would be North Carolina state law. Right. Iowa yeah. could be a bit different. But um, so at least we know we know this much that trash is not considered something that you need to. Yeah, well, so what we do in, like uh, what we did in, with, with the Raleigh Police Department is every Thursday when it was trash day um, in our district is we would go and get a city truck with city decals because we work for the city. And we would go around and pick up people's trash cans and literally trade them out for new ones. And we would take the trash back to the station and you set it out on a tarp and you dump the trash out. When I mean, when you're looking for a suspect, we don't just do this randomly. Like we're no, not just no, randomly. No, of course. I should have been like this guy was, is, is this is attached to this case and this guy's attached to that case. You know, we'll go and, and we'll pull their trash. So I mean, I'm sure they've been doing that for many, 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 many years. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So that's exactly what they do. They sit and wait. So they kind of go brother, just like they've been doing brother by brother, by brother, one person by one person. So they go and watch um, one of the brothers. He throws something out, a cigarette or something. Uh, they're able to get it much like this was, this is how they found the golden state killer it was with a cigarette of his, by the way, uh, through a genealogy base and a cigarette. So with uh, they, they were able to eliminate, 
one of the brothers. Then we get to old Jerry, Jerry, or yeah, Jerry Burns. Jerry, they watch for a while under surveillance, and he is drinking multiple sodas with. Uh, I, I don't like to call them sodas. That's what it says in the article. But he's drinking like soft drinks, right? Like Cokes and stuff with <laughs> with a straw, which I think is an egregious crime in and of itself. Yeah. But he's yeah, drinking he's his. a serial killer for sure. <laughs> right? That's the first. That's the first clue. So he drinks multiple uh, Cokes with a straw, uh, tosses it. They obtain the straw. Match. Bam, bam, bam. Match. Oh my goodness. I think it's crazy. I got so excited reading this. I can't imagine how they felt. And the guy, the detective whose father had been on the case, the father's still alive too. Well, unfortunately not the, not the victim's father, but the detective that had worked the case is still around. It just, Oh my gosh. So, um, so they find a match. So it's Jerry Burns. All right. So, uh, that's him. That's him. Now he was only 24 or five at the time of the crime. And that's what he looked like. Oh Damn. my gosh, that's wild. Put glasses on the dude on the left. You know what I mean? That's just nuts. Okay, so now what what, what do we know? Like, why wow. did he kill her? What was his relation? So that's what we need to figure out. Okay. He yeah. has zero relation. He didn't know her at uh-uh. all. At all. Keep in mind, why he didn't rob he her kill? and he didn't sexually assault her, which is very, very surprising. Was it right? rage? Um, she didn't, hadn't even left her car. In fact, authorities at this point believe uh, that he was waiting in her car when she got in her car. Why? I don't know. Mm. Well, Dude, because I would I assume that he'd watch her get out. When I was driving here today, something banged into my back seat of the van, like something uh-huh. like tipped over, and I thought somebody was back there. I was going to shit my pants. But, okay, know, so why? why? What does he say? Why? What, why did he do it? Okay, well, he says he didn't. Okay. But he can't he can't argue it because that's I mean he he his DNA is the only literally the only other DNA at the crime scene. It's his blood. And it's his blood because what did we talk about earlier when I said it's a case that they talk about that she saw from her death? She fought back and in her fighting, it might have taken 40 years, but in her fighting, she her nails sliced, she cut him. He was even wearing gloves, remember? Or, or right. very likely had to have been. He left not one fingerprint. Right. So she was able to probably scratch up his forearms or his face or whatever, enough to leave his blood on her dress. That is what, all of that is what solved this. Um, oh, it's why I just, oh man. So they they did say that she felt like hell. Um, those are the spots where the blood was found on her dress. All right. So let's talk about this guy. His wife, so they, they, it's uh, October 29th of 2018 is when he was arrested. So this, y'all, he was just arrested four years ago, four and a half years oh. ago from this crime that happened in 1979. Okay. So uh, his wife committed suicide. Get this in 2008, there had been some question of initially, like when they first learned this, that maybe he had something to do with it. They cleared him of this. I don't, I don't think he did. They did rule it suicide. And I'll tell you why that's not. Um, if, if we're talking about him being a multiple, like a repeat offender, that wouldn't have made a whole lot of sense anyway, but get this, his cousin, Brian Burns went missing back in, let me see, 2013 on December 19th, which was the exact same day of Michelle's murder many years later, you know, Coincidence, probably. They've never found the guy. They've never found his cousin. Whoa. Yeah, and he was missing the same day, many same years later, that this oh, chick was murdered. Fuck. Well, they they've cleared him. I say they've cleared him of it. They don't. Authorities don't find him to be um, a suspect in the disappearance of his cousin. But it's what? still a wild. I know, and Stop. his wife committed no. suicide in a way. No so chance. It's no wild. chance. It's wild. But okay. All right. So he. Check this out. So he still claims innocence. He did state one time, though. Listen to this dude. Oh, God. He said, he said to a cellmate, um, this is the information that, that came from that. He said, even if I get convicted, which by the way, he did get convicted. He said, even if I did get convicted, I still win because I've had a good life for the last 40 years. Oh, 
Oh. Oh, gross. But we still need to know why. What was his motive? Okay. Well, we don't have a motive because we can't find one and he hasn't said. However, um, so let me tell you this. So he was, he was, um, arrested on December 19th, 2018. December 19th is exactly 39 years after the murder. So he was arrested Again, on like his cousin went missing on December 19th. She was murdered on December 19th. He was arrested on December 19th. So exactly 39 years later to the day. On February 24th, um, he got a life sentence. This past October of 2022, he tried to uh, appeal to the Supreme Court that uh, he wants this overturned because he was, by the way, he was sentenced to life in prison without parole. Uh but he's trying to get it overturned with an appeal on the basis that his property should have never been taken, that they didn't have a search warrant. What we were talking about earlier with the trash and obtaining the DNA from his straw. It, that doesn't fly. That didn't work uh, because they were well within the rights to get that trash. All right. So here's what though, what do you think? She was stabbed 29 times in the face and the neck, and some in the torso, mainly face and neck. What do you think about that? I think uh, rage. I think jealous. I think uh, all the all these kinds of things. There, uh, there's got to be a motive. Like he didn't just. They'll say personal. Her out. They'll say right. So we've talked about this before. So if she someone, either said something to him, or he made a pass at her, and she got cocky she and said something back. Potentially, you know, and he's like, "Fuck you, bitch." So what we talked about is that if there's a murder like that and it's not personal, someone is probably not the first time someone's done that or it won't be their last. All right? right. So he was around for 40 years after that happened. He moved not long after that. He moved out of the area, eventually gets married, holds down a professional job, all these things. There are authorities in Iowa now that are saying um, basically – there are two or three cold cases now of women that fit the same victimology that they have no leads on. And he's being eyed for a few things. Oh. So there's, I think, I think unfortunately, or you could look at it. Fortunately, if these things get solved, he, there might be a lot more going on here moving forward. Like he's in the system. He's in custody. Um, I mean, like this was just this past October, just a few months ago that he tried to <laughs> appeal this thing. So, I mean, he's he's pretty newly in, in prison. Um, you know, it would be a fun game. Somebody just met Bosco mentioned that in the thing. It would be a fun game. Hmm. Well, not a fun game, but you remember how we used to remember when it was really cool to go out and find stolen valor. We'd go oh, yeah. out and they'd call these people out and they'd do all this stolen valor stuff. Like what if you uh, outed prisoners in prison? for being like pedophiles and stuff. Like what if you put it on blast to like other prisoners? Like, I mean, I think they do that be? anyway. Right. Like, isn't that, no, I mean like when they get suspicious, right? Like when they get suspicious of somebody or they don't know their story, they go in and then they do a little research, but they don't like research every single person in prison. So there's a lot of people that run out of the radar from what they've done yeah. and they'll lie and stuff. Now this guy's a little bit more high profile, so probably not, but would be interesting to, yeah. I'm down. With but that. wow, I'm man, I wish that. we knew why. Oh, and then, but a separate, we, a separate thing that really, you know, is unfortunate in this is that number one, of course, her parents died heartbroken with no answers. Right. And but also, the boyfriend Andy, but poor Andy. Poor so, Andy. Oh, that's another thing. Poor Andy didn't do it. And he has to right. know that her parents died thinking that he did. You know, and probably a few other people along the way. It's awful. There was another guy that had been one of her boyfriends, a close friend of hers, that initially was looked at uh, not as seriously as Andy. Uh, thank you, David. I appreciate that. Um, not as seriously, but he was definitely looked at. He passed the polygraph, but he was one of the ones that they came back to like 30 years later, right? When they came back with the new DNA and wanted to swab all these people they had originally cleared. And he is now at this point married to a judge and his mm -hmm. wife was like, uh, uh, no, don't, 
no like you can <sighs> like, do not submit your don't do that what um and he didn't uh, he didn't so then that looks suspicious but i'm telling you right now if if you came to me right now and said I'm going to need to swab you for DNA. This crime happened mm. 30 years ago. You You'd know, be like, swab me, uh, daddy. No, I'd be like, absolutely not. Right? Like, I'm getting an attorney. What, really? Even if I knew for a fact I didn't do it. Absolutely. Oh, not me, dude. I'm fucking, I'm going all in. I'm like, swab the shit out of me, dude. Absolutely Pull my hair not. While you do because, it. look, who knows how that evidence was handled initially 30 years ago? Who knows what? No, no. I mean, I will eventually do what I need to do, but not without representation. Like these days, I just look at it so differently than I would have before. But I, especially on a case that old, do you trust yeah. that? Oh, I don't. I, I don't know. think he was. Well, I'm uh, glad they caught the guy, though. I mean, I just wish. Mm -hmm. Now I wish I knew why. And, you know, maybe it's just because she was the prettiest girl. Maybe that's what it was, you know. That usually yeah. doesn't, you know, I mean, a lot of these victims are, are, you know, good looking or whatever, but I don't know. It would just make me wonder, oh, oh, the picture, go back to the yep. picture. Oh, I don't have the article with me, so I can't tell you. I'm afraid I'll give you wrong information. You first put a picture up of a, yes, that is a news reporter that was murdered around the same time. If I'm not mistaken, guys, if you know this case and I'm wrong, just tell me. She I don't have my notes like on this. The victim. Right. Yes, she does. And her case is cold and he is being oh, unofficially, super. unofficially looked Dang, at dude, in her they murder. Look the same. Well, and there you are some other, that's what yeah, I'm sure, but that's what I'm saying that there are some other cold cases in Iowa with a lot of similarities in these victims. Um, that is eerily creepy. Mm -hmm. Wow, man. Well, right. Good thing you're not as pretty as those girls. You're safe. Agreed. And you're safe. And I didn't light up the room or whatever. Just it is kidding. always the, the victims always. <laughs> you weren't the trifecta. <laughs> I wasn't the trifecta. <laughs> uh, dude, I what a crazy case, though. What a crazy case. Um, yeah. You know, I, I would love to know, like, before this guy dies, though, like, hey, man, like, what made you choose this chick to, to murder? And what made you but, well, murder in that fashion? I but mean, that's, that's another that's an reason, anger, dude. Stabbing somebody in the face twenty nine times. Yeah, listen, Fuck, I know we're wrapping dude. it up, but I know we're wrapping up. Do you have another mom thing. issues? Have we discovered that? Like, mm -hmm. see one of those bedwetting, you know, right with the McDonald's triad, right, right, right. Not that we know of, but but listen to this, and and we will go. But um, do do you think? Oh, oh, shoot! I didn't even tell you this. Let me tell you guys this. By the First way, no, all, no pressure, say, but Jason Rao from Breaking Benjamin. The guitarist just texted me. Said he's watching tonight's show. Hey, Jace, what's so, up? No pressure. Don't be. But, uh, don't be nervous. I'm not. So listen, listen, listen. First of all, did someone just murder someone in this fashion? Did he stab this girl and do and then just go just go off and and live his life and and get married and like nothing that that doesn't even make any sense whatsoever. In saying that, the one thing I didn't touch on before we go is his browser history that was How not browser admissible history? in court. Why? What are you talking about? Oh, you're talking about like his Which browser question history do you now. Answer? His browser right. history now. His current, like, yes, just um, right. he didn't have a browser arrest. history back in fucking 1979. No, agreed. Why? His, why wouldn't Why wouldn't? Why was it inadmissible in court? But I don't know. They they didn't. They were not able to get that through. Um, I don't know. I didn't even get into the why. But that doesn't matter. But let's talk about what it is because we know what it is now. Oh, His whatever. browser history included searches of women, blonde women, dead blonde women, having sex with dead women. Oh. Um, and into he was getting into like the dark webs, like seeing actual pictures of what it looks like for someone to do that oh what the fuck so dude. but that was in his more current that was you know that was recent browser like history. as it's so like think, progressed like back then right just so we talk about that like maybe back then he wasn't interested in necrophilia there he's in a in a wide open parking lot in a mall whatever but then now right wow dude what a sick fuck man i don't know right. speechless crazy 
don't tell me he didn't do this again. I can't, I can't imagine that he lived the yeah, rest of his life yeah, he's, just he's innocent. Definitely done. I'd like to know where his cousin is. Where's Brian, for fuck's sakes? We don't know. Ask, Man, make ask a plea Jerry. deal with this dude. Like, we'll take away like three of those life sentences. Just leave you with like two. <laughs> okay. Or like, you know, sweeten up the pot, dude. Just be like, look, man, we'll we'll take you out to a nice steak dinner or something. I don't know. Yeah. But I mean, definitely uh, the chick looks the same. The this media girl and this other girl. Well, and and if she died the same way, I would definitely be trying to link that to him. But right. you know, was this there is no what DNA on her cold shirt? cases? You know? Um, yeah, maybe yeah, not that I, know of. I didn't even look into hers, but it was more of a I, I mean, just a holy cow her. moment when I saw her face. Well, I will. I'm happy to revisit this one. I'm happy. What it makes me want to do is start looking into the cold cases in Iowa at this time with the same victimology as these girls, you know? Yeah, Because that's what that. it looks that's like they're me. already doing. Man. Yeah. Why don't, what, uh -uh. That's, some, that's crazy stuff, man. Well, I'm glad he's in jail. I mean, I, technology is yeah. so incredible, man. That's so cool that they um, that they were able to solve that crime. And I'm glad she fought back, you know? Daddy ain't raised no bitch. I feel bad for no. Andy though. You know, poor Andy. Gosh. And dude, her parents. No, yeah. You know. But Andy married a judge. No, it was another guy around the same another time, guy. like another yeah. friend of hers. That was yeah, another um, dude. Uh Pesky Tomatoes wants to know if there was any update on the Delphi case. Now we didn't cover any updates on the Delphi case this week. It was uh, only the Murdoch murder stuff. Um there's nothing new on Delphi right now. That's why. Andrea said, um, Eric interrupted her. She didn't respond and just stared at him. I don't know. What was that about? Andrea I always interrupt you, though. Like, I've been her. interrupting you for like the last 18 years that I've known you, so I don't know that. I do often just stare at you. I think you just stare at me all the time anyway, just in utter disgust. Oh. Um, anyway, man. What what's a, up? My, what's my that? brother's in the chats. Who's your brother? Don't you worry about it. Which one's your brother, Jill? Yeah, that's my brother, Jill. Well, I hope you had a wonderful 50th birthday. Uh, good luck with menopause this year. It's usually when it kicks Thank in. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Probably get those hot flashes here any minute. Uh, uh, By the way, real quick, media, you guys, thank you so uh, much. Oh, I was trying to thank people. I was. I'm thanking everybody. Michael Hendricks, Bosco. Oh, you got a couple of Venmos since we weren't allowed to take Super Chats today. Uh, let's see. You got one from Christopher Kunai. It's truly remarkable that at her advanced age, she is able to one, coherently relay a true crime story or any story for that matter. And two, stay at past 8 p.m. Even if it's just one night a week. Happy birthday, I'm Andrea. I'm going to kick tomorrow. Five dollars. Um, you got. Oh, I'm going to another... kick tomorrow. OK. Uh, and then happy birthday to the best grandma ever. Just kidding. Love your podcast, Amy Lewis. Thank you, Amy. So I owe you six bucks. <laughs> nice. Um, and some bottles of wine. So uh, yeah, the, <laughs> the amount of people who uh, messaged and, and whatever today, I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. We had a lot of fun with this stuff. Eric had more fun than he should have with the stories. But we appreciate it. Uh, I knew he must have a vault of pictures he was hanging on to, and he did, and he delivered. But Thank you guys for all your kind of words and for listening. And please um, listen to John, listen to Drew, Eric, when we talk about it. We totally count on you guys. We're enjoying this and it's a lot of fun. And we have a lot of momentum and a lot of fun things we're looking forward to uh, in the 2.8 days more this year. Uh, but we seriously, seriously, well, well, that's sweet, Shandor, but I'm no blind dates. But, um, you know, I seriously uh, do appreciate it. And we need you guys. So we need you to like and review. And what else? Subscribe? What else, Eric? What else is there to do? Oh, hey, guys. He's gone. What do you want to talk about? Anything? One idea. Oh, he's back. Fuck. What? Um... Shane Dorn, I think 20 says it's in the discard. Uh, anyway, Buffington I love Murdoch. You, Buffington Murdoch. Michael Hendricks, come as uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Shandor, come to the fucking meetup, April 12th, Wednesday. Then, then maybe you can win her over with your eyes there. 
you know. <laughs> Micah said, just because the dude is blind, you won't date him. <laughs> <laughs> God, I would love to have a blind wife. I'd like see how close I could get my wiener to her face without it actually touching. Like do all that kind of shit. I used to babysit these two deaf kids. And uh, I used to just talk so much shit to them when they couldn't hear me. That's don't so stop. Funny. Don't. Why? No, nope. No. Why? So that's the cool no. thing. That's what you get to do stop talking. as a hearing person. Stop. I used to just, I used to just talk all. You really wonder why shit. our memberships are on hold? Like, you want to blame it no, on that case that we talked about? No, the only thing our memberships on hold is because uh, we are pro police for, for the, uh, for the breakdown. So. As long as you're anti-police and pro-COVID vaccines, you'll never, ever get demonetized. But for those of you who are just listening, we did get demonetized, wrapping it up. Um, So that's why you don't see any super chats. That's why none of you guys are lit up in green for our paid members. We're on pause right now. Got our PP spanked because uh, uh, we were just as anti the Memphis beatdown as everybody else. But I guess because Antifa knows that we're a police podcast, they put in like 300 complaints about us so right now youtube's working through that so um anyway until next time sarah david j bosco corn pop was a bad dude michael hendrix Sillamander, buffington murdoch uh all you guys britney fuckner i said fuckner not fuckner um pesky she tomatoes. had her baby send me a message corn pop was a bad dude who did britney had her baby send me a message he's very advanced Oh, very cool. Um, uh, when you shake your baby from an early age, they advance a lot quicker. Uh, so, go away. Always, guys, we love you. Thank you. All right, guys. Until next time, guns up. Giddy up, y'all. Is this me?